All right, depending on which order you are watching this, this is the last video I'm recording this week, and this will be fairly short. This is our reading video um, for week seven. And again, I have my dates wrong. <laughs> I need to correct that. Week seven goes from February 28th until March 4th. So anything that's coming up due will be either due March 4th or the following week, March 11th. All right, so you might see all these images up here, and we're going to be looking at a story over the next few weeks which will be tied more into essay five and one, two, three, four, five and six, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Um, and it's a, it's a short story called um, uh, Barn Burning, and um, which is, is really interesting because if you look at these images, this is from a Korean film from 2018 called Burning. That movie is based on a story which we're going to read by Haruki Murakami, who's a Japanese writer, and we're obviously going to read that in translation. He wrote it in Japanese, uh, translated into English. Um, and then that story is kind of loosely based on a very old story from the 1930s, 40s by William Faulkner, who's an American writer. Um, and they all have this, they're, they're similar, but they're not really the same at all. Um, and it's what we call adaptation, right? Where you sort of take something and make it your own. Anyway, we're going to focus on the middle part, not the old William Faulkner story, which is kind of interesting, but it's a little bit different, or the, not the new movie. However, if you want to find this movie, um, I, I really recommend this filmmaker, this Korean filmmaker who directed this movie. is It's pretty interesting, but I will warn you, if you watch it, uh, if you have small children around, you know, it's definitely not a um, family friendly. It's not Finding Nemo no, or whatever. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's a, you know, I think it's a pretty clearly R-rated, but... So again, or if you're, you know, if you're mixed company or whatever, you just, just be aware. I'm recommending the movie, but with caveats, it's definitely an adult movie. Uh, not in that sense, but it is, it is very mature for mature audiences only, as I say. Okay. Anyway, enough said about that, but just, to, I just wanted to give that away because I didn't want to recommend it. And then, you know, you, you pop that DVD or, or we don't do DVDs these days, do we? You stream that movie. And I uh, find out a lot of, a lot of, there's violence, there's, there's nudity, there's just a lot of, you know, R-rated stuff. So anyway, that's a great movie though, I think. Short stories is even better, and this original short story is great too, but we're, we're going to focus on this one. So that is what we're going to be doing real quickly in the lecture. But before I even get into the story, just talking a little bit about the story to get us started, I want to go back to our previous short story that we're basing um, essay three and four on, which is called A Temporary Matter by Jhumpa Lahiri. She's an Indian American writer. Actually, she was born in London. I think I mentioned that before in England, but her family's from India. I think she spent a lot of her time in Boston because a lot of her stories are set in Boston, around Boston, including the one we're reading. Um, and what I'd like you to do, because these stories are getting increasingly complex and we'd normally be able to have discussions of these in class. So just to make sure everybody's kind of staying with me on this um, and to hear what you have to think more, you know, because I want to hear your ideas on this, not just in your papers. Uh, I'd like you to do a uh, post to our, a discussion board that I set up this week, and we'll do this with some of our stories. It's only 150 words. Of course, if you want to write more, you can do that. And if you do 150 words in, in some fashion, either answering one of these questions or some other thoughts you have about the story of temporary matter, um, then it's 50 points. And I set this up as just extra credit. So it's basically, if you if you didn't do well in one of the essays or you missed a journal or a quiz or something, um, this this would be a good way to make up some additional points. It's 50 points. We'll do I think three of these probably before the end, maybe four. So you may you may have up you could get up to 150 or 200 points, which again, as you know, one of our essays is worth 100 points. So if you're struggling with with this is a way to kind of uh, earn some points, but it's also great for me to hear from you and what you're thinking about uh, this short story. So that's a temporary matter. It's a discussion board. You're going to be able to find that in the week seven uh, folder where where it says week seven course materials uh, or course content. I think it says. So just like we talked about our other stories, uh, as we go into, this is not a temporary matter, this is an image from the movie, the Korean movie I mentioned, which is called Burning, which is based on uh, the film uh, or, the, or the short story, the Japanese short story, um, uh, Barn Burning. But who are the most important characters? You're gonna see um, really basically three characters in this story. And so as you, as you look, you might just start to think, what are they struggling with? You know, And I think you'll, if you pay attention, you'll you're getting the voice from the narrator and the narrator is, you know, you, sometimes we have what's called an unreliable narrator. And that just basically means somebody's telling you a story, but you're not really hundred percent sure if they're telling you the truth. And that's something maybe to watch for as you go through this. Also this story, like others that we've read so far has a lot to do with how characters are going to interact with each other, maybe in conflict. 
And like the Hemingway story, the conflict may not be so obviously on the surface and you may have to really dig and think um, what is happening in this story. Um, I think of really good short stories sometimes are a little bit like puzzles. You know, you're, you're actually kind of almost like solving something as you read it. So it's almost like working at crossword or, or doing a Rubik's cube or something. It's, it's for your mind, it's kind of gymnastics and good, good writing can, can have that doesn't always, but I think this story definitely does. So, um, there is some, some stuff going on under the surface about how these characters, and again, there's two men and one woman are kind of the main character in this characters in the story that you'll see as you go through. Where does the story take place? Well, Japanese writer, and I believe if I remember right, this, I don't know if it gives a clear set. It's definitely in Japan, and I can't remember if it's Tokyo or Osaka, but I think it's one of the larger cities in Japan. He's, this story collection came out, I think, in the early 90s or late 80s, so we're, we're looking at a different era a little bit. Uh, the movie version of this, again, which is set in Korea, it was made much more recent, so it's they changed the setting to Korea, and they changed it to uh, more modern, you know, in the, in the 20 teens or whatever. Um, so again, but this is our, our setting of our story, so if you you know, if some things seem strange or different, you know, you have to remember they're, they're writing in the 80s, 90s, somewhere in there uh, in, in Japan. And maybe a large city like Tokyo or Osaka, if I remember right. The language is different. You know, here's, here's the thing. Um, what you might notice, and now again, it's in a translation, so it's a little different. But you might notice very informal or formal types of language. Um, you might, again, use figurative or very concrete. These are just things that you might notice as you read through the story. Um, I think one of the things you might notice in the first paragraph or two is how casual the narrator seems to be about this relationship he's having with this woman. And, and so it kind of mystifies it in a way. And you're kind of wondering what kind of relationship are they having? Are they boyfriend, girlfriend, or are they just friends? What's, what's going on? And so, you know, you may want to just pay attention to that because he's very, his tone is just very, I think just very casual as he, as he, as we open the story point of view, who's telling the story. And again, remember I said there, there's a narrator and he's telling the story. Can you really trust him? That's another thing to think about. That's not just point of view, but this unreliable narrator, Maybe he's not telling everything. Maybe he's hiding some things uh, that maybe would be important. Or maybe he's just clueless about what's happening because there is something, I think, sinister uh, happening in the story. But can you figure out what it is? Like the puzzle, like I said. And then themes again for our reading. Um, I think the two themes that maybe come up the most in the story that I see are the idea of freedom. In other words, people can do whatever they want to do. And then where does that kind of go, you know, once you're, if you're totally free, like if I just decide I'm so free, I'm going to take a, you know, can of gasoline and throw it out in the street. Well, that could hurt some people. So I was free to do that, but then I just harmed a bunch of other people. So where does that kind of, I think that's one of the themes that comes up a lot in the story is the, the tension between freedom, doing whatever you want to do in a society where you're interacting with other people and then responsibility. You do have responsibility to friends and neighbors and different things like that. Where's, what's the line though? And then I think this is, Maybe what Mur Murakami was getting at, I, I don't know, because I've never talked to him about it, but or even read criticism about the story, but that's kind of what I'm seeing. You may see other themes in the story, like friendship, relationships, all kinds of things that may come up as well. But these are two that I kind of think are, ha are kind of operating in this, this short story. So for our um, summary, reading summary this week, again, you don't have to summarize the whole story, but if you can get started with barn burning, start reading it and read a, uh, the first few pages, um, it's uh, the short story will be posted in Blackboard under week seven. And the narrator does start talking about this girl right at the beginning of the story. Uh, here he says, I met her at a wedding party of an acquaintance and we got friendly. Um, so again, it's kind of casual, almost ambiguous. What does that mean? You have to read to try to, to decide. But what do you think the narrator feels about the girl he describes? Are they just friends or is there something else going on between the two of them? Explain why you think that. And again, this is our first question. I've just divided the questions up because this story is a little more complicated, I think, than some that we've looked at. And then question number two, um, the woman's new boyfriend seems to have a lot of money, but neither the woman nor the narrator. So the narrator is the old, he's not really a boyfriend. We don't really know, but he's a friend of hers. Then she, she ends up with a new boyfriend. Um, neither the narrator or the woman seems to know how he makes his money. Do you think it's suspicious when someone has a lot of money, but no one knows how they got it? Why or why not? So, you know, um, this is just a question to think about. Uh, this is a dialogue, uh, part of the dialogue from page 136 of the story. Don't worry, it's not 136 pages long. It's, uh, it starts on like 132 because it's in the middle of a collection of stories. The guy's got to be loaded, I ventured to comment to her once. Yeah, she said, without much interest, I guess. 
So she doesn't seem to care and nobody seems to know how he's made his money, but he definitely has quite a lot of money and uh, doesn't seem to have really like a regular job. So that, you know, there may be some suspicion there if you think about that as you read through the story. Finally, um, this, uh, he says, he, he shares a secret. He tells the, uh, and at one point in the story, he tells the uh, friend that he does basically, basically practices arson. He's burning down these old barns every once in a while. Is this a metaphor? Is this a true thing? Is he just joking? Because they're they're getting high when they talk about this. And so he wonders, is this really real? Or is the guy just making it up? Uh, but at any rate, um, he asks, does she know? In other words, does this woman know that you're that you're seeing your, your girlfriend? He asked, pointing upstairs where she was. Not a thing. Fact is, I've never told anybody about this but you. So he, he, at some point, I'm giving spoilers here, but he does tell the guy when they're they're hanging out that he just randomly burns down barns, these old barns out in the country, uh, out in the suburbs or countryside in Japan, I guess. Um, and, um, you know, so the person kind of starts to wonder and obsess about what, what's going on with this guy. Again, mysterious person, doesn't seem to have, he has all this money, but where does he make it? He's, he's committing arson on a regular basis, it sounds like. What's going on with this person? Or is that like a metaphor? In other words, is he really burning down barns or is there some other secret he's not sharing? So these are questions you'll have to answer as you go through the story. We're going to take a couple of weeks to read it. Um, but the question for our journal is, if a friend of yours was dating someone who you thought was dangerous, would you feel comfortable warning your friend? Explain why or why not. So just something to think about in your journal. And again, this is our next story. It, it, we may be reading this for a couple of weeks. So if you haven't even finished with Jhumpa Lahiri's story, the temporary matter, don't worry. Get to this when you can, but um, it'll be the basis of essay five and six we'll be talking about. And then finally for this week, it's really related to our short story um, for our journal. Um, there's an article called Domestic Violence, and that'll be also posted with the short story in the course materials folder, course, uh, course content folder for week seven. And this is just, um, again, take a look at the article. It describes different forms of domestic abuse in including something called financial abuse, which I had never really knew much about until I read this article. And I still don't know a lot about it, but I, I got a sense of it from reading this. So take a look and I think you'll see how it's tied in later when you read this and then you read the story also with what's going on in the story that we're reading, um, Barn Burning. All right, so that is everything for our reading lecture. And I said I'd keep it brief, so I will stop there. If you have any questions, as always, please send me an email or um, come to my office hours on Monday and Tuesday at 1 in Blackboard or let me know another time and I can be in Blackboard to talk with you. Hope you have a good week and again just be in touch if you have any questions.